What's going on guys, I am the Walrus Jedi, and in today's video I will be continuing my Clone Wars coverage with the first four episodes of Season 1, Ambush and the Malevolence arc. So, if you like these kinds of videos and would like to see more Clone Wars coverage in the future, then please consider liking and subscribing and hitting the notification bell for more Clone Wars in the future. There will be spoilers for these episodes, so consider that your warning. And now, the cast of these episodes. So, Tom Kane, Yoda, the narrator and Admiral Yolaren, D. Bradley Baker as the clones, Brian George as King Katunko, Corey Burton taking over as Count Dooku, Nika Futterman is Asajj Ventress, Matthew Wood is the battle droids, and reprising his role from Revenge of the Sith, General Grievous, and then... Anthony Daniels is C-3PO, Catherine Tabor is Padme, Matt Lanter is Anakin Skywalker, Ashley Eckstein is Ahsoka Tano, James Arnold Taylor is Obi-Wan and Plo Koon, Terrence Carson taking over for Samuel L. Jackson as Mace Windu, and Ian Abercrombie as Chancellor Palpatine slash Darth Sidious. Episode 1, Ambush, aired October 3rd, 2008 on Cartoon Network and was directed by Dave Bullock and written by Stephen Melching. All right, the episode begins with a moral before the intro with Tom Kane's narrations. This episode's moral is, Great leaders inspire greatness in others. After the narration, the Republic would like to build a base on Toydaria, so they set up a secret meeting on a neutral moon with the Toydarian king. However, the Separatists, led by Ventress, arrive on the moon, before the Republic and shoot at the Republic vessel bearing Yoda. Yoda and three clones board an escape pod to get to the moon, and the ship leaves. Ventress sends a battalions of battle droids after them when they land. They do manage to fend off the battle droids, but one of the clones, Lieutenant Thire, is injured, so they take refuge in a cave to rest and tend to fire. That's where Yoda asks the clones to remove their helmets to see their faces. He then says that the force moves about differently with each of them, helping to distinguish them from each other. He then gives insight to each one, and then they leave the cave. They take out more droids and a few tanks. Ventress, at the behest of a hologram Dooku, is ordered to kill King Katunko when he says he has seen enough and is going to join the Republic, but Yoda stops this, and she flees. Yoda takes Katuko's offered sword as a sign of respect and friendship, and as them joining the Republic, and that's where this episode ends. I would give this episode a 6 out of 10. Episode 2, Rising Malevolence, aired October 3rd, 2008, on Cartoon Network. It was directed by Dave Filoni and written by Stephen Melching. The moral for this episode is, Belief is not a matter of choice, but of conviction. A weapon is devastating the Republic fleet, so Keldor, Jedi Master, and Council Member Plo Koon is sent to discover the secret weapon. He and his fleet are disabled by an ion blast from said ship, which cripples the ship by shutting systems down and leaves them defenseless for the ship's cannons to take out. Close ships are destroyed, but he and several other clones manage to get in escape pods. But Grievous, who is in command of the Malevolence, which is this massive destructive ship, sends out droid crews to eliminate the survivors. Anakin and Ahsoka go look for Plo Koon. The droid hunters do find Plo's pod, so Plo and two clones go out to repel the droids, leaving eventual Commander Wolf in the pod to receive Ahsoka's signal to basically show that someone's looking for him. The Jedi and the clones do get rid of the droids, but they're stuck outside, and that's when Anakin and Ahsoka show up and rescue them. However, they are not out of the woods yet, as the Malevolence returns and fires another ion blast, and, you know, so they have to dodge through the rubble and the junk of the destroyed Republic ships, and they 
managed to just barely outrun it and get into light speed, and they make their report to the council, and that is where this episode ends. I would give this episode a 5.5 out of 10. Episode 3, Shadow of Malevolence. This aired October 10th, 2008 on Cartoon Network. It was directed by Brian Callen O'Connell and written by Stephen Melching. The moral is, easy is the path to wisdom for those not blinded by ego. Anakin and Ahsoka take a squadron of Y-Wing bombers to take out the Malevolence as it's attacking a medical facility. Plo Koon escorts them. They fly through a nebula called the Balmora Run and dodge large creatures. Once through, they arrive just before the Malevolence, but they did take a couple of little dings, but they hadn't lost any ships. Once the Malevolence does arrive, it begins attacking the medical transports and fires an ion blast at Anakin and the other clones. They do manage to dodge it, but they do lose a few fighters. And so they get close enough to begin their attack run. Their, their uh, mission is to go for the bridge. However, the flak from the cannons is too heavy, so they decide to move the target to the ion cannon and they blow that up and they cripple the malevolence which allows obi-wan to arrive with his ships and continue to fire upon it and that's where this episode ends i would give this episode a 6.5 out of 10. 4. destroy malevolence aired october 17th 2008 on cartoon network directed by brian callen o'connell and written by stephen melching the moral is, a plan is only as good as those who see it through. Padme is captured by Grievous when she follows bad intel. Anakin and Obi-Wan stage a rescue. They also set the Malevolence's Nava computer so it'll crash into a planet. The good guys escape and Grievous flies away to the Separatist secret rendezvous. And that's where this episode ends. That episode I will give a 6 out of 10. And then some interesting things from the special features of these episodes. When they were designing King Katunko and the other Toydarians, they wanted them to look cleaner than Watto did. And yeah, so the fatter, the you know, the more rounded the, the belly is, the more well off apparently a Toydarian is, according to them. And it is cool that in this that the they reused some or didn't reuse, they used some unused ship designs from revenge of the sith to design the malevolence um they took that ship and basically combined it with uh some other ship designs and and that's how you ended up with what we got for the malevolence which is kind of cool what i liked for ambush it was nice that we got a yoda centric episode and it's great to see more tordarians so that's awesome and Yoda's lessons to the clone was to the clones was pretty good. It's always nice to get you know Yoda centric stuff because Yoda's a cool character, so that's always nice. It's also nice when we're not always focusing on Obi Wan or Anakin in this show. Rising malevolence. This was a bit of a Plo Koon focused episode, which is again nice because, but. You know, I, I could have had more from Plo Koon. Uh, the Malevolence is a cool ship. And a similar lesson that the clones aren't expendable and stuff like that from the first episode. But it's it's a little different. But yeah, so that's nice. For Shadow of Malevolence, uh, there is a bit, you know, when they're going through on the Malevolence with the ships. It's kind of reminiscent of the trench run from A New Hope. And it is nice that we get some more Plo Koon in this episode. And then for Destroy Malevolence, uh, C-3PO getting thrown around, you know, hitting train, getting hit by the train in the Malevolence and all that stuff. It just, I thought it was kind of fun. And when Obi-Wan and Anakin are actually like sneaking aboard the Malevolence, that's kind of fun. It is done better later on, you know, some sneaking type infiltration missions, but it's fun to see here. What I didn't like for Ambush... Ventress is a weak villain. She's very, like, you know, villain of the week. I'll get you next time at the end of the episode type of stuff. So that's unfortunate. For Rising Malevolence, um, again, it would have been nice to have 
a focus more on Plo Koon. Shadow of Malevolence, the Ion Cannon should have been the primary target from the beginning, not the bridge, it just whatever. And then destroy malevolence. Grievous is not threatening in this episode. You know, he because he's he's in the previous two episodes, but and I think he does a, a decent job of you know being in command of the ship and you know being a threat. But then once he get starts interacting with characters that uh, he shouldn't or can't kill or whatever, it, it just ends up being kind of lame. Well, that's the first four episodes of The Clone Wars. Let me know what you thought of these four in the comment section down below, which is your favorite. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. And until next time, thanks for watching.